Good evening and welcome to Crime Corner. With me, Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault. That's the name of the show. And the Minister of Comics. How's it going, Min? I'm doing great, and I wish I was wearing as cool a shirt as you are right now. Right on, man. You'd like this one, huh? I love Moon Knight. I love the Moon Knight figure that I have. It's uh, up here somewhere. I think it's right here. Can't Very really see cool him, figure. I, I got that one for eBay pretty cheap, but that's a pretty sought after figure, I think, by some people. Yeah, I think so. Here's my Moon Knight Mezco. Let's see if I can get... There oh, cool. he is. And Jess, I've heard you're to blame for someone's Mezco addiction. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I happily take the blame for T. Lar Blunt's Mezco addiction. <laughs> he has now far surpassed me in Mezco uh, addictiveness. He bought the Popeye set of Mezco. Wow. And already has plans for him. Um, I He is so into toy photography that he thinks much differently than I do. He, when he buys figures, he's thinking of how he can set them up for pics. Right. Um, and I just get them. I mean, I'd love to start taking pictures and stuff, but for right now, I just like them to display them. And I, I don't know what I'd do with Popeye, but he's already got plans for Popeye going to the savage land with a dinosaur and the X-Men. I don't know. <laughs> Does Popeye come with a can of spinach, though? That's oh, yeah. Question. Oh, okay. yeah. I was going to say, and, and one of the pipes and stuff. Yeah, he has a pipe, and I think he has an open mouth head, so he can be yoinking the spinach in. Popeye and, was never a character I really gravitated toward, and I can't imagine myself buying a figure, but to each their own. Uh, yeah. I grew up loving Popeye, but I... I don't know that I would collect a figure. I think I watched Popeye <laughs> because that's all that was on. Kind of like we're supposed to be all that's on right now. <laughs> um, well, we have Hayden from. There's Hayden. Which is pretty Hayden? impressive. Right here. It's pretty happy, labeled. He's at. Happy Thor's Day. Awesome, badass folks. Hayden, you're up late. Thank you for tuning in. And Farhan. Isn't it pretty late where he is? To, or it's early in the morning, isn't it? The name is Han, Farhan. Farhan, what time is it where you are? Is it the morning? I think it's usually like five or six when he watches at eight. So it must be around that time. And we have Marcelo. Hello, Marcelo. Thank you for joining us. Hugs for drugs. Are you still there? Cycle Cleveland. Hayden says it's 2 a.m., not that late. That's pretty late. Cycle <laughs> Cleveland, don't know if he's still with us. I don't know if Hugs for Drugs is still with us. I think Cycle was threatening to do a reckless review on our next crime corner, so this is his opportunity. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's working in the ER tonight, though, so I don't know if he's going to be able to join. It's uh, 2 a.m., not that late for Hayden. He's uh, uh, He stays up late. Uh, oh, Hugs for Drugs still here in Texas. Thanks, Hugs. Um, Farhan, whoop. Farhan, it's 9 a.m., and here's King of Goldfish, a new viewer. Hello, I discovered the channel around a month ago, and I've been watching tons of old videos and batter days in the back caves. You guys are awesome. Thank you, King of Goldfish. I feel I like you've been getting that. a lot of new viewers who've been watching your back backlog a lot lately. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I really appreciate that, King of Goldfish. Here's a teat. Hey, a teat, how's it going? Hayden gives a reason. He's young and childless. He doesn't need sleep. That's very true. Matt D, what up, dude? And oh, here's Chris Original Recipe. How you doing, buddy? Um, this evening's broadcast is brought to you by. Oh, wait, I have a okay, just a sec. I've almost got it. Let's see. Dyingbreedcollectors.com. They're our sponsor, and they have a new code. Let me see if I can share what the code is good for 10% off. Entire screen. Window. Why is my chat showing up? Well, Jess is trying to do that. I can, <laughs> I can vouch, I can vouch for Dying Breed Collectors packaging, which was amazing. Please do. I just got this book in today, X of Swords. It's in perfect condition. Packaging was great. 
So I can definitely vouch for his packaging abilities. So when you know when you order a book from Dying Breed Collectors, it'll come safely. It'll come in bomb-proof packaging. I'm really excited to read oh. this someday because I'm not going to be able to read it until the new omnibus comes out of X-Men by Hickman. Okay, I think I figured it out. Yeah. Uh, here is what the code is and what it's good for. All three volumes of Criminal. Go to dyingbreedcollectors.com. Use the code... Oh, I haven't typed that in yet. <laughs> Type the code in uh, Crime Dog, and you get 10% off this all three books. That brings it from 140 down to 126 for all three books. That is a good... Um, that's a good deal. 126 bucks for all three books. That's a darn good deal. Uh, and let me type up um, what the code is because I'm so lame. <laughs> it's Crime Dog, one word. Yeah. All right, Crime Dog, one word for your 10% off. Right. Let's see. Uh, save. We're really uh, good. At, we're really good at having a sponsor, guys. We we got it. Code Crime Dog. There <laughs> it is. Dyingbreedcollectors.com. Ten percent off on all three volumes of Criminal, which brings it from one forty down to one twenty six. Code Crime Dog because it's Crime Corner. We're talking about crime tonight. 007, Bond, James Bond. So let's um, okay. Dyingbreedcollectors.com. Code Crime Dog 10% off. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do I do? Okay. I go back to. No, wait. I stop sharing. <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. Stop sharing. Stop. Stop it. Okay. There we go. And Brett says it. The deal is so good, it's criminal. <laughs> but I'm. Um, I still have Crime Dog up there. <laughs> Okay, whatever. And everyone <coughs> definitely needs to have criminal in their collection. Everyone does. That's For right. Sure. It I'll looks be... like you didn't need to order 12 million copies, Jess. It seems like it's pretty readily available. <laughs> oh, that address doesn't work. Yeah, that's uh, thanks, Atit. Yeah, you have to put dyingbreedcollectors.com all the way together. Thanks, Atit. I separated it so you could see what it looked like. But it's all one word, dyingbreedcollectors.com. Thanks, Atit. Dyingbreedcollectors.com for 10% off with code Crime Dog for all three volumes of Criminal. And you, you better get it because I don't think there are any plans to reprint these. Is that correct, Minister? From what I've heard from Ed Brubaker in his newsletter, there's no plans to do an oversized reprint of the books that have gone out of print in the deluxe edition. So that sounds like they might go towards standard size hardcovers for reprints. So if you want to have these nice oversized deluxe hardcovers, definitely pick them up. I think Cruel Summer is already gone. I'm pretty sure that's out of print already. Oh, is, and that's oversized, huh? And that's pretty much volume four of Criminal, which is kind of hard for people. Under, <laughs> it's definitely confusing for people. I understand why. We, I feel like we've been explaining it. First, you explained it to me three or four times over the course of a couple months. Then we've been explaining it to people about Cruel Summer. Yeah. Because it got confusing with uh, Junkies and Bad Weekend. I think if they had probably, if they had, th if they had thought about, oh, we're, we're going to do these reprints, they probably would have <laughs> included, you know, Cruel Summer as volume four. I think they printed out Cruel Summer and then came up with the idea to do the reprints. I think that's kind of why it doesn't line up the way maybe some people would like them to. But it still looks good on the shelf, though. It's still a great book. It is a great book. I need to reread that. So I've only read it once. Find it. Gabriel D says, Criminal, amazing three books. Good to have you in the chat. Uh, chat. Gabriel, Carl N. is here. Good to see you, Carl. Crim do Car Crime Dog sounds like Jess's rap name. With Bob from the original 1989 Batman movie as his avatar. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good pull. Um, I can promise you this. I won't be freestyle rapping ever 
on my channel. Jess, you don't know what the viewers want. What's that? I don't, you don't know what the no. viewers want, like like Tyler. They want this. That's all I'll do. Is it no called, rapping. It, it's the mouth harp, right? It's the mouth harp. That's Got right. It. And Marcellos uh, is uh, almost done with volume one of Criminal, and it doesn't disappoint. Nice. I'd be we very love... suspicious of you if you said it did disappoint. I have to rethink would you, every. Would you every... judge him? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, judge is a harsh word. I'd be like, huh, I wonder what didn't do it for them. <laughs> I haven't really heard many, I haven't heard any bad words about Criminal. At least I, I can't, none that I've heard. I'm sure there's some people who hate it, but I've never heard of anybody who does. We should look for it online. We should Google disappointed in Brubaker's criminal and see what happens. <laughs> you can ask Siri. Uh, Ooh, Joe Chip. You have to choose ahead. between us and Manga Bros. Manga Bros is still on. It's quarter after nine. What do they have to talk about? I specifically chose nine because I thought they'd be done. Here, Joe Chip. Can you go to Monger Bros to hear the mouth harp, though? <laughs> right. I know Riley has one, but word on the street is Jess is much better at the mouth harp than Riley, so. <laughs> uh, I can't. Well, first of all, I know Riley's on restriction. He's only allowed to be on an hour a night, so they've <laughs> already run over what his time allotment is. So I'm shocked to find out that Monger Bros is still going on. Um. Oh, here's Hayden. Criminal just <laughs> felt meh to me. So overhyped and a letdown. I'm assuming. <laughs> Haven't read it. <laughs> classic, classic Hayden post. Yes. Jake Rocco in the chat. Thank you, Jake. People love Moon Knight. That's just a really cool, that's a really cool design shirt. I love I, that. I don't even know where I got this. You should do a Moon Knight video. Uh, yeah, I should. I have enough. You pretty much read most of it, haven't you? Most of the um, stuff. At least all the modern stuff. Oh, yeah. I've read all the modern stuff. I've read... You read Bendis, didn't you? Yeah. But I need to reread that because I read it a long time ago. Uh, I read The Moon Knight that got collected in the omnibus as a youth, so I need to reread that. But I probably have enough Moon Knight that I could do a video on it. Uh, here's Gabriel. How's it going, Gabriel? Good to see you in the chat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was a new viewer from last week, so great to have you back. Right. Um, Carl N. says, Omnidog and the Minister, you both just made me drive into buying all three deluxe hardcovers of Criminal just now. Hope this is more than FOMO. Did you go to... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how long it takes Jess to get, get there. <laughs> Did you go to Dying Breed Collectors? It's all one word, dyingbreedcollectors.com. And use the code Crime Dog to get ten percent off all three volumes of Criminal. I hope you went there because they're our sponsor. Crime Dog gets you ten percent off. Tell me, tell me you went there, buddy. <laughs> and Farhan has a question for us that we can answer. Just at nine eighteen. Have you guys done a Crime Corner in Black Sad? Was rereading it last week. And to think of it, it's one of the best crime noir graphic novels. I love Black Sad. We did review it several months ago, and we both loved it. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's definitely one of the best crime reads in terms of comics that you could possibly get into. I need to get you into Granville. What's that? I don't think I've heard that's, of it. That's Brian Talbot's book, where it's not only anthrop anthropomorphic <laughs> animals, but there's also humans in, in it. The animals are the superior cast, C-A-S-T-E, uh, and he uh, uh, is the, um, I think he's a, a ferret or a weasel. He is um, a detective. And they're very well written. Uh, a new book just came out this week that collects all of them. It's called Granville Integral um, by Brian Talbot. I think he did the same thing with Luther, Luther Arkwright. I highly recommend Granville. Is it, is it a crime book? Yeah, he's oh, a cool. private detective. He's a private investigator. Private. Oh, detective. cool. Wait, let me get it and just show you some of the art real quick. Awesome. I'll try to answer some questions while you're grabbing it. Well, thank you, Hayden. 
Hayden says, what's not overrated and needs more hype is Amidog and Minister of Comics. Such wildly amazing people and kind of hunky, too. 10 out of 10 recommend. Well, that's a great endorsement, Jess. Well, he has his, doesn't have his headphones on. <laughs> I was just reading Kate, Hayden's comment where Hayden says that we're, we're hunky guys. So, Oh, where's thanks, that? Thanks for the compliment. 919. Kind of hunky. We should take a a uh, picture of this and put it on our Instagram. Should we take issue with the word kinda? <laughs> um, I'll take kinda hunky. Yeah, I'll take it. That's, I mean, Jess and I were just text- well, Jess and I were just texting before the show that we'd rather die young and fat than old and healthy. So I'll take it. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've seen enough old miserable people at my wife's uh, previous job to know that. I'm I'm not that excited to be 92. Well, it's I mean, like now they're speculating that like my kids my son's age will live to be 120. Like consistently, not not being outliers. That just seems far too old. What kind of quality of life will you have past 100? Well, I think they're saying that you're going we're going to be exponentially more healthy and have longer lives. And so, but I mean, you read the Bible, and you see Methuselah being a thousand, it's like I don't want to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being a thousand, hundreds of years old? That'd be, that'd be really boring. I have uh, trouble just getting around. I, I'm barely past 60. My body started breaking down at 40. Imagine so- that Walgreens fall at 120, Jess. <laughs> it would have killed me. <laughs> Those women wouldn't just be watching you roll around. They'd watch you just dead on the curb. Well, I wasn't rolling around. I was flat. <laughs> I, the wind got knocked out of me, and I hit so hard i couldn't draw a breath <laughs> uh, but yes they were standing around here's granville noel which is a christmas story is it black and white uh no oh, okay. wait till you see the art though and the the story is fantastic oh nice yeah and he's a private investigator he's very dapper do you know what like time period this is set in it's like a steampunk era. It's a it's an alternate reality, kind of like Sherlock Holmesian times. Um, yeah, but with some steampunk thrown in. Got it. And who's the publisher? Black Horse. I never heard of him. <laughs> Dark Horse. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, they're really trying to rip off Dark Horse. Don't tell me it's Black Horse, T- Taylor. It's Dark Horse. I'm so sorry to lead you astray. Here's the racy parts. So he changes colors and stuff. So it's really cool as he does his investigation. And the writing, Brian Talbot is a fabulous writer, fabulous writer. And um, I love the book. I love all the art. I highly recommend that after you buy Criminal, all three volumes of Criminal from DyingBreedCollectors.com, that you pick up Granville in integral, integral, because I think some of these might be out of print. Uh, why'd you t- why'd you even tell me about them then? Because Granville Integral is out, and you can get that. That's gonna be annoying to get one out of print though, because you sold me on that series. I Granville Integral has all of them. Oh, sorry. See, you don't listen to me. I knew it. I knew it. Now you finally have proof. Super. <laughs> Uh, here's Carl in with a compliment. Thank you, dude. At least you pay attention to me. <laughs> uh, here's a crime question from Matt D. I have a crime question for you guys. Have you guys read Scarlet by Bendis? I know there's an absolute edition, but I don't hear many people talk about it. I read it when it first came out and liked it. I don't have the absolute of it. I still have the two hardcovers. I would be happy to review it for this channel this crime corner this episode this show have you read it i got like halfway through i wasn't a huge fan so we won't be reviewing it for this show <laughs> I, I will have to review it for uh, uh an omni dogs vault review that's probably the only bendis book i didn't really enjoy that much oh okay but i think our next crime corner is going to be reviewing his crime noir omnibus material so we will do some more bendis sometime soon okay uh, let's see. Joe Chip throwing shade at me. 
bounces right off Joe Chip. How dare you? <laughs> I guess he decided to stay with us. Thanks, Joe Chip. Thank you, Joe Chip. Yeah. Make as, make as many old swipes as you want, as long as you stay here. <laughs> oh, that's easy for you to say. Make some <laughs> church shades. Just throw some shade at the church and see how he feels. <laughs> um, let's see. Great show, you two. I'll go back and catch the rest later. Love rewatching your team ups. Thanks for watching, Reaper. You're a great fan. I always appreciate your support. And uh, Gabriel had a good question right above that. I know he's a newer comic fan, so I want to make sure we help him out. What DC or Marvel omnibus should I get? Uh, I think I suggested to you. I'll make a new suggestion to you. I'll say all new Wolverine by Marvel is what you should get. What do you yeah. say you should get? That's a hard one to beat. Yeah, in terms of ones that are in print, that's How a really a, good one. Why don't go you with. pick a DC one? Like Green Arrow at 1,500 pages. You know what? I'll, actually, I would say Aquaman by Jeff Johns Ooh. or Super Sons. Oh, both good recommendations. Both are really good. So there you have three choices, Gabriel. Wolver all new Wolverine from me. And what from you again? Super Sons. I have the dumb one with the less issues. Ugh. Me too. And then Aquaman by Jeff Johns. Very nice. Both. I think both of them are still available. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they are too. And Aquaman, those two Omnis might even have a good code on Amazon if you can't find them at the other websites. Amazon has some good coupons going right now. Will that Granville Noel story be included in the new book? I'll have to look. I think so, because Granville... I was listening to Jess. He said they have everything, so... <laughs> I assumed. Let's see. Granville, Granville, talking about Granville. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Granville, talking about Granville. Oh, so the Granville Integral hasn't come out yet. I out saw it July. this. What? I thought I saw it this week on. Uh... Well, that's what it says on Amazon. So it's probably maybe, maybe it is out in the direct market. I thought I saw it on In Stock Trades, but they're not a sponsor, so we're not going to talk about them. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. It contains everything, Marcelo. Granville Noel, Granville, Granville Mon Amour. Granville Bet Noir and Granville Force Majeure. You're right. It is on. It is up. It is available. I'm right. Well, I didn't know. I just say what it based on Amazon. Usually Amazon is two weeks behind the direct market. So that's why I was confused. But you can get it at other websites. Sure, dude. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it. It sounds good. Um, it is really good. I really highly recommend it. Apparently, Jess is sassier at nighttime. <laughs> isn't, that that the, <laughs> isn't that the only time we talk? I guess so. <laughs> uh, yes, Matt D, it, it collects everything. I have five books, and it has all five things in it. So what I just showed you is definitely in the new collection. Jess, you're a big fan of Ben Omnibus. Do you want to answer that question? <laughs> I didn't see it. Oh, here's Purveyor of Loops. What's up, Loops? First Live Crime Corner. Peace and love. Peace and love to you, Loops. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm sorry. You asked me, oh, Ben Omnibus 1. Do you guys recommend it? No. Not for your first Omni, I wouldn't. No. I think Ooh. if you want to get into Venom, the best spot right now is Donny Cates' run. That's like the cleanest entry point as of right now. I am really hoping they announce a Rick Remender Venom omnibus because I really want that series. I yeah. really want that. They have to do that at some point, right? I mean, they have to. I, I really, I'm, I'm almost hoping it's not going to be a Venom omnibus volume, whatever. I want it to be like an Agent Venom omnibus. That'd be really cool. Um, Hayden, I, I know Gabriel and I don't think that Harley would be a good first Omni for him. Um, so it, 
it's it's different than if I was rec. I don't know that I'd recommend Harley to everyone. I think Harley's kind of an acquired taste. Um, and just because you and I love her, I don't. I mean, I'd love it if everybody loved her, but not everybody loves her. I just read her in Suicide Squad today by Tom Taylor, and she was more there for the comedy relief, but it was still great. If you're going to read a Harley book for the first time, I'd recommend Harleen by Stepan Shedge or however you say it. That's a great entry point. Yeah. Um, Gabriel, yes, I do have a book stand to read heavy books. Um, I'd have to go upstairs and get it, which I will at some point, and I'll bring it down and show you, and I will show you where to get it on Amazon. It's a very nice foam covered with a soft cloth that's for a laptop, I'll, and it sits in your lap, but it is perfect for a, an Omni. The heavier the Omni, the better. And I actually read all books on it because I don't like uh, hardcovers digging into my uh, legs. So I put all books on this thing. I will, I'll go get that before the show ends. Um, I'll try and do it in the next few minutes. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where to get it on Amazon. It's a, I'd love them to be a sponsor of this show, too. <laughs> Carl N. has a good idea for you, Jess, to make a jingle for our a new A jingle sponsor. for this sponsor? DyingBreedCollectors.com um let's see ha here's a good question see speaking of james bond have you guys watched all the bond films i haven't watched all of them i'd say i've watched a majority of them i would say i, I don't really like roger moore's interpretation so i kind of avoided a lot of those um i've caught bits and pieces of almost all of them on tv at some point I think the ones I've watched in their entirety is all the Sean Connery stuff, all the Pierce Brosnan movies, and all the Daniel Craig movies. Um, I've watched all the Sean Connery movies probably 50 times each. I, I watched all the Roger Moore ones because that was the only choice for me right. as a kid. Um, I, I didn't like him uh, as James Bond, but he was the only choice, and so I, I watched it. Um, I haven't seen any of the, uh, Timothy Dalton or Pierce Brosnan ones. And I've only seen one Daniel Craig one, which was Casino Royale. And I loved it. And yet to see Skyfall. That's Taylor is telling me to see Skyfall. I I'm happy to watch all. He has four of them, right? I'm happy to watch all four of them. Yeah. He has four Quantum of solace and what else? There's first of the Casino Royale, then for Daniel Craig, it's every other movie is really good. <laughs> it's oh. Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, then it's Skyfall, and then it's Spectre. But the thing is, they're all connected. All the movies are kind of connected, so you kind of have to watch them all. I, having grown up and worshipped Sean Connery, I still felt that Casino Royale by Daniel Craig was my personal favorite Bond movie. See, I love Casino Royale, but I think Skyfall is my favorite. Okay. Well, I, I, gosh, I got to see that done. And it's directed by Sam Mendes, who did American Beauty. He did Road to Perdition. He did 1917. So it's like a really A-list quality director, too. Oh, and I also saw the George Lazenby one. <laughs> On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah, because that's all that was available. <laughs> yeah, he only lasted for one movie. Thankfully. And I also went because I had a crush on Diana Rigg. I was eight at the time or whatever. And I loved the Avengers from the UK that was here with Steed and Peel. Uh, she was Emma Steed. So, or wait, Emma Peel, Emma Steed. She was Emma. <clears throat> Mrs. Peel. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, I had a crush on her. So I, she was in the George Lazenby one. I think Jesus Pierce Brosnan. Wife, I, think. I think Pierce Brosnan is underrated. I think a lot of his movies aren't good. That's not really his fault. I think it's the fault of the writing and the directing. But I think GoldenEye is a fantastic movie. I think it's one of my favorite Bond movies, and it has spawned off a great video game, I, which I love. I loved that video game, so I don't feel like I need to see the movie. 
Uh, CJ Yo-Yo says Brosnan is the greatest of all time. That's a great picture of Flash right there, CJ. And someone's here who should not be. He was not invited. Uh, wait, I saw somebody say Tyler do some <laughs> sick beats. That doesn't sound good. Uh-oh. I was told not to come to this stream, but you aren't the boss of me. Yeah, no, because that your would boss be Jenny, is, your wife. Your boss is gone for this week. So we yeah, have Jenny, your week. wife is your boss. We have some things we have to send Jenny. Some evidence. <laughs> some evidence, yeah. <laughs> he tries to preempt us by saying, oh, I already sent her that. But I don't know that that's true. He tells his wife all the dumb stuff he does anyway, so we can't really get him in trouble. <laughs> well, 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 says T. Lar Bloom. I like remember Tyler used to try to get us up into a frenzy being like, guys, I have the biggest box coming. What am I going to do? And we try to give him some thoughts. He's like, oh, I told my wife anyway. It's like, why are you even, why are you even like, worried and talking to us about it? I already told him that I was never going to fall for that again. <laughs> told her all about it. Sassy what? Jess will not put up with that. <laughs> it's, the sun is down and Sassy Jess is up. <laughs> Speaking of Sassy Jess, Dying Breed Collectors, all one word, <laughs> dot com. Our sponsor will give you 10% off the set of criminal books. One, two, and three. 10% off with the code crime dog. So go to dyingbreedcollectors.com and get 10% off criminal volume one, two, and three. Save big 10% and off. Get code great crime packaging dog. like I did with this book. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your experience because I actually didn't hear your experience. Oh, yeah. You were trying to figure out how to put things on the screen. I just got this from Dying Breed today. Great packaging. He really takes care of his books. You won't have any issues there. So you can trust that you'll get some awesome books in awesome condition. And I just got a message from him. The code is all set. You can do it now until Monday midnight. That's a lot of time, which you shouldn't need. You should just go there right now because you need criminal if you don't have it. I mean, come on. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> um. Guys, I have some bad news. I have a big advice coming and I need help. Maybe you should learn to spell rap first. <laughs> Jess is a grammar Nazi, so you better be careful. That's right. Um... <laughs> oh, this is a true statement. Austin Powers International Man of Mystery is the best Bond movie. My favorite is The Spy Who Shagged Me. That may be one of my favorite movies of all time. Especially What's, uh... that scene in the tent. My favorite scene is whenever they're driving the steamroller and they're like, the guy's like 50 feet away. He's like, no! <laughs> and he's like, I'm whole minute to run him over with the steamroller. <laughs> I love that scene. Uh, let's see. Um. I just will take forever to ship something, Atit Patel. It's very crazy how long he takes to ship stuff. Very upsetting. Is, is there a way I can block a viewer? Yeah, I can put you in timeout, Tyler. <laughs> I, I might do that. I can't speak to Jess's shipping. He always ships things very timely and very well. I've gotten many packages from Jess, so Tyler Blunt is just a man-child who's trying to swipe at us. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with that? Um, wait, what is he waiting for? Um, you want me to put him in timeout? I can do it. <laughs> Why not? Might as well. He'll just sign in under John. Okay. Yeah. Wait, Johnny cool. Johnny cool. Or SSD toys. Um, <laughs> or one of the many other identities. Yeah. There's no getting rid of him. He's got like nine names. He's like Teflon. He just bounces right back. How did you pick up Batman The Adventures Continue Volume 1? Either he's talking to Tyler or he accidentally called me Tyler. I don't know I, which one's I worse. Think, oh, he <laughs> meant Taylor. <laughs> it's okay. Jess confuses us too. I do. It's hard when they're both on the same time. I have that coming in tomorrow. So I'm excited to get that in. Uh, it's what is by that? Paul, it's continuing at the end of the fourth season. 
and it's written by Paul Dini and Alan Burnett, and it has art that looks a lot like the animated series. It's kind of like, like a continuation of the animated series in it, comic form. It's a trade? Yeah. Ooh, I better get that. I'm stuck on Batgirl, though. I don't think I've moved beyond Batgirl. But that, Batgirl's pretty... Wait, well, you're not really watching in order anymore, right? You're kind of bouncing no, I am. Around. I'm That's, still watching it in order. She's pretty far into the series, and you're doing pretty good. I'm still on the first season. That first season is, never ends. Here's the thing: they're just there's uh, the broadcast seasons and the ways they break it up afterwards. So it's it's really confusing because Batman the animated series is made up of three different shows. Technically, there's Batman the animated series, there's um, Adventures of Batman and Robin, and the New Adventures of Batman and Robin. So there, there's just it's confusing. There's the broadcast schedule of one long season, the second shorter season. I know my old DVDs had four seasons, so it's kind of confusing how they're divided up. So you're farther than you think you are. Okay. And he, Tyler has Tyler Sears, Super Squad D, Tyler Blunt, Johnny Cool, Nerd News Network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Was, Nerd News, was that one of his old channels? Yeah, Nerd News Network was something he was doing every day in the morning, breaking news. It lasted two days. I still can't believe Johnny Cool didn't last that long. I mean, they were playing a really popular video game that everybody wants to watch him play. Which was what? I don't even remember the name. It was so obscure. <laughs> <laughs> it was a game I never even heard about. <laughs> and Gabriel's talking about the Batman Adventures Continue. They introduced new characters like Deathstroke and Jason Todd, which never showed up in the actual show. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Justin Taylor, what are some of your favorite Batman Omnis? I actually don't have any Batman Omnis. I have a lot of the material in other editions. Um, yeah. But my favorite Absolute that I have is Absolute Black Mirror. That's a must-buy, even though I don't think it's readily available anymore. I think my favorite... Uh, I'm like a Taylor... Well, I do have several Batman Omnis. Probably Batman and Robin yeah. by Tomasi and Gleason. I have that material. Favorite. I have that material in other forms, and it's fantastic, and everyone should buy that. Buy that and the Superman by Tomasi and Gleason because they look really cool next to each other based on pictures that I've seen. Jess, do you own any movie sound? Oh, do I? Or sound <laughs> scores in vinyl? If so, any favorites? I would say my one of my okay, I'm gonna block because I get them confused. Um, it was the soundtrack Inception. That's my favorite soundtrack. I listen to soundtracks while I read. I think my top favorites, I love Blade Runner 2049. That's one of mm -hmm. my favorite scores. I love that movie too. Man of Steel. Is a great soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. I agree Zimmer with that. Yeah, well. that's Hans Zimmer, right? Yeah, and for yeah. A, if I'm reading a Batman book, I almost always listen to Batman by Danny Elfman, the original mm -hmm. sound, the original score for that. There's just so many good scores. I love it. It really depends on what book that I'm reading. But Blade Runner 2049, if I'm reading a sci-fi book, I always listen to that because it's perfect. Yeah, I love any Hans Zimmer soundtrack. Um, that's my go-to. I love Inception. I just really love it. Um, I have a huge thing of soundtracks on vinyl. I have all the Marvel movies that are out on vinyl. Uh, and I intend to keep collecting those because they've said they're going to put out every Marvel movie score and soundtrack out. Um, in, uh, including Amazing Spider-Man, which is Sony, but um, the MCU and Spider-Man I, I like to collect. So those are uh, some of my favorite movie soundtracks. I probably should do a vinyl uh, video because it's almost alphabetically organized now. And I can, uh, I can do that. And since it's a crime corner, I have great <laughs> crime soundtrack to listen to is um, Thief by Tangerine Dream, which Jess yeah. has. That mm -hmm. is a crazy good score. And I think they did some other movies, too. I can't remember what other movies they did in the 80s. Maybe Jess remembers. Oh, yeah. They did a lot um, of movies. Uh, one of them was... Um, oh, it was crazy. It was with Roy Scheider. Um, 
the I don't know. It was a movie my girlfriend and I walked out of at the time. She didn't like it. it was with Roy Scheider. I don't think I've ever walked out of a movie in the theater before. She didn't like it, and we left. And I was in college, and I was in puppy love with her. So we could have walked <laughs> out in the middle of West Side Story, and I would have been, sure, sweetie, whatever. <laughs> she, of course, broke my heart, and that's the way it goes. Was she the drink to the face girl? <laughs> no, that was after college. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, that you told was... that story on air, so I don't feel bad asking. Oh, no, I'm happy to tell that story anytime. It's funny. <laughs> I got what I deserved. Is it, how did it feel to be a movie cliche? I'm getting the drink thrown in your face. Uh, I'm lucky she didn't punch me, really. I mean, she would have, too. She could have. Um, yeah, not yeah. much you can do. No, she caught me red-handed, and I don't know. That's I'm lucky I got away with that. But hey, you changed your ways and now you're on me, dog. So it all all all's well that ends well. I changed my ways once I met my wife. That's what yeah. I'm saying. All's yeah. well that ends well. Right. And now, a... now the bet the worst thing you do is just order a lot of stuff. And that's not that bad. Well, I haven't got a drink thrown in my face over it. So there you go. That's a good you point. Must be doing pretty good. Yeah. Farhan wants to hear the story now. For those we do have new <laughs> we do have new reviewers around Jess who haven't heard that story yet. So Okay. <laughs> this was um 1984. I was living with my um I graduated college in 1981 and I was a terrible boyfriend my whole life. I always cheated on my girlfriends. So I was dating this one girl in Carmel where I grew up and uh an old, uh, not old, but uh, a girl I had a crush on in high school moved back to town and contacted me and said, uh, let me see how I can say this. She, she, I guess in today's vernacular, she uh, hinted that she wanted to hook up. So she said, let's meet for a drink. And I said, okay. And I'm dating this other girl at the time. It was like a Sunday night. At, at a bar and who goes to there was no there was i mean there were people there but nobody goes to a bar on a sunday night so i thought i was safe and <clears throat> i'm sitting there at the bar with this girl we're sitting like in each other's lap practically and my girlfriend walks in and she hates this girl that i was with she went to high school with us and she hated this girl and she she walked in with her mother and father. I forgot Ooh, that, that part. That, that's the worst part of the story, Jess. How'd you ever tell me that before? I sorry, I forgot <laughs> that part. Her mother and father were trailing her. They came in for dinner, and she walked past the bar and looked and looked again and looked at me, canoodling with this girl. And she came over. Pulled my shoulder around, so I swung around like that, grabbed my beer, and threw it in my face, let the glass drop and break, and I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so I felt no, the glass didn't break. It fell, but it didn't break. And I couldn't see anything. She threw it right in my eyes, and I couldn't see anything. Now that I think about it, it was a gin and tonic because it had lime in it, and it burned Ooh. my eyes. I couldn't see anything and I'm down on the ground because I fell off my stool and I, and everybody in the bar is going, Ooh, yeah, go girl clapping. And I can't see I'm on the floor grasping around humiliated. And by the time I get up and wipe my eyes, I am completely alone. No girl that I was with, no girlfriend. Oh, so that girl that didn't know you had a girlfriend. Correct. Uh, okay. Yes. I ended up that night completely alone with drink in my face, driving home, completely humiliated. Yeah. And then Mrs. Omnidog set you straight. That was five years later. Yeah. When I moved here to Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all ends happily. So there we go. <laughs> yes. We've been together 34 years now. So it worked out. No drinks in your face in 34 years. I call that a win. Yeah, no, no drinks to my face. 
Yeah, Purveyor of Loops is correct. Carmel is a small town. It got really small that night. It was really small. Um, no, she said the F word to me. You F her. And then threw it in my face. So Jess, that was the first time you were rolling around on the ground and people just stared at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then when I broke my hand last year and those old ladies were standing around me doing nothing. <laughs> Don't right. worry, Doc Collector. We're still in the midst of tangents. <laughs> no, that's a big tangent. Jess is giving us some life story of it, some uh, really important life story <laughs> advice. <laughs> Purveyor wants me to do build a diorama of that, like the Walgreens one. Uh, yes, I voted for him for mayor in Carmel. I, I still live there. Was he actually the mayor of Carmel for a while? Actually, I'll tell no, you know what? I didn't vote for him for mayor. I didn't like him. He went door to door and I uh to campaign. This was in 85 or 86. He went door to door. He'd even come into your house to talk to you about the issues. But he owned, he was so pro-business because he owned a number of businesses in Carmel. And I didn't like that he had such a pro business agenda because it would help line his pockets. And I voted for his opponent who lost by a margin of something like 90% to 10%, <laughs> just a wipeout. And he was mayor for, I don't know, two or four years or something. So yeah, I, and I worked in Clint Eastwood's restaurant, the hog's breath. Uh, Clint Eastwood filmed a movie across the street from my house. There's another good story when I was in third grade. I'll save that for another episode Did when my meet, mom shut you, down production. So you've met him a couple times then? Yeah, several times. Man, I have a lot of questions for him. A lot of film <laughs> questions. I don't think he'd remember me at this point. I mean, man, that guy is very productive at 90 years old. He's still directing movies like every single uh, oh, year. Oh, I thought you meant he's still producing children. Oh, no, no. I mean, <laughs> although I think he does have a lot of kids, a lot of different people. So I guess that does count. But he just, he's still making movies at 90 years old. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I don't think he's making nearly as good as movies as he used to, but still producing that kind of material every year. That's a lot of work. Farhan, don't let it change your opinion. That was just my dorky 25 year old opinion. I'm sh he did a fine job in Carmel. Everybody loved him as mayor. Uh, he uh, don't don't change your opinion. He's a great actor, great director. Everybody loves him. You can keep loving him. It was just my stupid opinion. Don't. Uh, he was very nice to my mom when they shot across the street from our house the movie Play Misty for me. He was very nice to her after the shooting and stuff. He's a, he's a nice guy. So don't change your opinion on him. Pretty soon you're gonna get a. Clint Eastwood on your doorstep. Jess, I heard you've been bad mouthing your mommy dog's vault. <laughs> That's uh, not bad. Thank you. I just got to squint the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite Clint Eastwood quote? Quote? Yeah, like from a movie. Can you oh, think of I'm sure it's from Dirty Harry. I it might be from the. It might be uh, a man's got knows limitations. That's a, that's from the second Dirty Harry movie. Um, I, I think it's, I'm holding a, okay, wait, would he say I'm holding a Magnum 44, the most powerful handgun in the world? Well, you all this excitement. Off. I forgot if I shot f five bullets or only four And the, do you want to get lucky? Do you think you can get lucky punk? That's the one. I think one of the, with I a mouthful of hot dog. <laughs> he keeps chewing. That was, was so great about it. He left the restaurant and kept chewing his hot dog. There's so many good quotes in Unforgiven too. I've killed everything that's crawled the face of this earth. Like that whole I think that whole quote at the end of the end of the movie where he's just like talking off people in the the uh, bar. That's that's a great movie too. Wait, what what quote is this from? I don't recognize it. I'll look it up. I tried being reasonable, but I didn't like it. What's that one from, Atit? I haven't seen Gran Torino. Oh, that's a great movie, too. Yeah, I heard that, but I haven't seen it still. I tried. Oh, is it Outlaw Josie Wales? Maybe that's what it is. Could someone let us know? 
I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Cancel Tyler, keep Taylor. I missed some stuff. Was checking out. Omar's still on the air? Give the rest of us a chance. Son of a... Was checking out Omar's new announcement sneak peek on Patreon. Oh, Patreon. Okay. Patreon's okay. You should do a Patreon and just tell Jess Bragg stories in your past as you're a little... <laughs> Don't you have a lot of them? I do have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my Patreon stories would be very boring and people wouldn't pay for it. Um, you make up for it with your spontaneous sense of humor. Do you guys want to hear about the time I didn't have a girlfriend but I was 21? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that story is going to go over that well. But my only girlfriend I ever had ended up being my wife. So there you go. Can't complain. No, not at all. Joe Chip, we should do a Patreon just with tangents. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> the comments came in really quick. Memoirs of Jess Bragg tier. People would pay just for that smile. Cancel Tyler, keep Taylor. Right on, man. Um, Pretty sure Hayden compliments our looks more than our wives do. Uh, <laughs> I'd pay Patreon to keep Tyler away. What do you think of that, Super Squad D, Johnny Cool? A dollar a day keeps the Tyler away. That'd be awesome. That'd be a great pay that'd be a great tier of the Patreon. <laughs> no Tyler guaranteed. <laughs> so we did read some. We'll keep tangenting, but we'll we'll talk about our books too because we did read 007, two 007 books, which were Greg Pack's books, and then we read James Robinson's Felix Lighter, which I thought was interesting to take the CIA connection and write a book about him. So, at fifty-two minutes. We're starting our topic for this, and we promise the chat we will keep tangenting. But we yes. will talk about the books too. Yeah, so keep asking your questions. We'll yeah. make sure we get to them. Ask whatever you want. We'll we'll <clears throat> take questions as they come in. So Jess, what book do you want to talk about first? Uh, <laughs> the one that got my heart pumping, Felix Leiter. <laughs> uh, I did I give it away when I said it, it got my heart <laughs> pumping? All I meant was it was exciting. Here's the thing. So Jess has a strict rule that I can't tell him anything about how I feel about a book that one we review together or that he's never read. And so Jess texts me and goes, "Yes, well, wait. Well, says, the reason is because I don't want it to influence me at all, right, right? Because I I know your taste, and I don't I don't want to have a smidgen of your opinion color how I read a book. Okay, now go on. I guess I should take it as a compliment because it means you respect my opinion. Oh yeah." I definitely so, I mean, you wouldn't be on this channel if I did. <laughs> <laughs> so Jess texts me yesterday and says, Oh, I'm reading Felix Leiter. My heart's pumping. I said, Jess, you know the rules. You can't spoil it. He's like, Well, I didn't tell you how I feel. I'm like, no one ever says my heart is pumping with a book that they hate. <laughs> no one's ever like, oh man, this heart, this book sucks. Get my heart pumping. <laughs> well, anyway, why don't you talk about the book, Jess? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it was extremely well written, extremely exciting. Let me show you some of the art because the art's good. No surprise, I love the book because I've loved all the James Bond books so far. And this is about Felix Leiter, his CIA connection. And Felix is retired now and gets called in by the U.S. Um, gets called in... I not by the U S government, by a government to see if the Japanese he, government, Japanese government in, cause he's in Japan. If he can spot, um, an international spy who has gone rogue, that's all he's been paid to do is see if he can ID her that she's still around. And that gets him caught up in a web of intrigue and adventure. Uh, that is one of the most exciting books that I've read for such a short, small book. He's, he's more machine now. He's got a robotic arm and robotic leg. Um, 
and they play a part in this book. The part of why he retired, he's older and a little bit slower than he was in the CIA. So he partners up with um, Japan's answer to James Bond. Uh, Tiger to, Tanaka, which is a great name. Yeah. And Tiger has his own organization. Um, and I'm not even sure that I can do it justice to tell you what it is that they're after. But one thing, just spotting this girl leads to a chain of events and horrific crimes that takes them all over the place. The two of them, Tiger and Felix, takes them all over the place in an amazing adventure with crazy, amazing gadgets, uh, lots of fight scenes, some uh, it turns, well, I don't want to spoil that, so I won't say that. Tiger um, Tanaka is the much better fighter of the two of them, and he uses a samurai sword, which is pretty cool. Right. Uh, because Felix, uh, as I said, is older and a little slower, and Tiger's young and well-trained. He has his own uh, school where he trains his own men and women uh, into the finest field agents possible. Uh, and Felix is caught up in it because um, it involves dirty weapons uh, that they're trying to figure out who has funded these dirty weapons, what their use is, and what their final purpose is supposed to be. Uh, it, and I, I wasn't kidding when I told Tyler Taylor <laughs> that my heart was pumping. I'm so offended. I know, sorry. Uh, because it is exciting almost from the minute you start reading the book. This is by James Robinson. It is an excellent, uh, a fabulously written book that is is very exciting. There are no slow moments. Um, and everything, I I didn't feel personally that there were any loose ends. Everything went, was very well stitched together. It went logically to the next place, to the next place, to the next place. And there are lots of twists and turns in this book, but they all make sense. They're all easy to follow. Uh, and I found it extremely exciting and I loved it. So before this video, I think all the Bond books that I've read have been great to amazing. This is the yeah. first one I felt like it was just kind of good for me. I thought oh. it was... I felt, I, like you said at the end, you felt like everything was tied up. I felt somewhat unsatisfied by the ending. I feel like they were kind of leading into another book. Well, I think they, they are, yeah. I feel, I feel like it's been a number of years and they haven't gotten back to it. So I'm kind of worried they're not going to go back to some of the threads that need to be picked up. I'm hoping oh, they I will didn't, be. I, I didn't could be pick wrong, up though. on that. I could when, be wrong. And so when I, was this published? I think it was 2017. Oh, I thought this was new. Okay. So that's why I'm kind of hope I'm worried that they're not going to get back to that thread at the end because I'm interested to see how it ends. Yeah. And so it wasn't. It was only. There's no volume one on the on the side. So I was like, wait, is this really going to be the end? Because I feel like there's so much more they need to pick up, and I'm worried they're not going to get to it. Mm. So that part was a little unsatisfying for me, and I think I think Felix was a little bit too bumbling throughout the book for me because you don't really get hints of that at all in his James Bond appearances in the other comics. In the other Bond comics, he's very competent. He doesn't really make a lot of mistakes. All of a sudden, in this one, he's kind of like he can't fight. He kind of makes bad decisions. I feel like it was a little out of character for how we see him in the rest of the comics. Well, he is older, and he has half an arm and no leg. And he's... Right, but I feel like in all the other series we've seen him in, he was much more competent. And it would, I feel like they didn't sow the seeds for that character decision. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's still good. I'm still entertained by it, but I had a couple frustrations with it. I think his character was a little bit different than his other appearances in the comics. I feel like the ending wasn't as satisfying as I was hoping for. But mm. I, still, I still thought it was good. I still enjoyed it. I'm still happy to have it in my James Bond collection. Okay. I'm hoping to get back to this series and to get back to this character as a, in a second volume. To kind out, of of a, out of a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate it? I'd think a 7. I was thinking you'd probably say 7. Uh, I would give it a solid 9. So we do differ, but we respect each other's opinion. But the art by Aaron Campbell is great. I think he's a great artist. He did John Constantine Hellblazer, 
with Cy Spurrier. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's a really great artist. Yeah. Very, very creative layouts. Very awesome action scenes. Right. So, yeah, I dug it. And you kind of dug it. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, the way it goes. We, we've got a ton of James Bond books, and there's only one that's just good to me. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, well, so far, every one of them has been great to me. But, yeah, I, it's, it's a personal taste thing. That's, that's fine. Yeah, just because I didn't give it a nine doesn't mean I didn't like it. I still liked it. Right. Would you recommend people buy it or hoopla it? I think if you want to get these James Bond books, you should pick it up. I, I wouldn't say this is the best one to jump into if you want to try a James Bond book for the first time. I think the best to jump into would either be the Warren Ellis stuff or the Andy Diggle stuff. Right. So um, I, I would recommend this as the first Bond book you read. I mean, it's not really a Bond book. It's Bond does appear, and he constantly talks about how he's not as good as James Bond. Like, he'll never be able to fight as well as him and save the world like he does consistently. But I think maybe steer towards Warren Ellis' stuff, Andy Diggle. I also love Benjamin Percy's Black Box. Yeah. That's a fantastic book. So I would maybe go with those ones first. I think uh, this Felix Leiter should probably be read last because since he's older, uh, less agile and, uh, you know, so aged that I would say this is probably best read after everything else. And they do reference back to the first volume of Warren Ellis, Varger. They had the asterisk and say, read Varger to get the more background information. So definitely read the Warren Ellis stuff before you read Felix Leiter. Did you, uh, you didn't get the Warren Ellis omnibus or did you? No, I have the two crackly hardcovers. Right. Actually, did, this one didn't crack, not crack I was, one pot for me. I was just going to say, I didn't hear that in this one. Or these two either. Maybe they, maybe they fixed the problem in the newer ones. Huh. When was the, when were the Greg Pak ones made? These are the newest ones, I think. These are the very newest. Okay. I think the, yeah, I think those are the newest ones that are, out at least okay and matt d has a question for us is there no particular reading order for the bomb books i think for the most part you can read them out of order besides felix lighter yeah i would say re like jess said if you're going to read if you're going to read this book read it after everything else it'll make a little more sense everything else like the james bond origin books by jeff parker we've both read and loved it that's set outside of this continuity i would think because it's set in the 40s during world war ii so I think you read all of them out of order besides Felix Leiter. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think this is the one we haven't read yet. Is this the series of short stories? Yeah. So we're going to do a part three at some point because we still have to read Reflections of Death, which is an anthology. We still have to read James Bond Case Files, which is an anthology. I've already read The Body, but we're going to talk about that one as well. And there's a new one coming out in August called Big Things. We need to get that one, too. I don't think I've read The Body. I think you have it, though. I, I have it, yeah, but I don't think I've read it yet. Yeah, so we're going to do a part three and wrap up all the ones that are available at some point soon. I, I would say this is one, besides Brubaker and Phillips' books in our collection... These are the other books that Taylor and I agree on most about being happiest that we own all of them. Uh, and they're a, like a um, kind of a favorite part of our collection or we're really happy to have them in our collection, would you say? Yeah, even though I was, I was more mixed on Felix Leiter than any of the other ones, I'm still happy to have it in my collection and I will reread it. So I'm happy to have all these books and I, I love how they look on the shelf too. Yeah, um, but I, I don't, I don't know that there's another series that we own besides the Brubaker and Phillips that we're as excited about as the James Bond books. Yeah, that we you have and I share. Yeah, we have texted about the texted about them a lot. We're always excited when a new one comes out. Yeah, that's for sure. And yeah. the current series is by Christos Gage, and so we're really excited to read that when it comes out. Yeah, very much so. Here's Chris Borman, Chris D. Borman. 
Love you guys. Last James Bond Crime Corner. I bought six books. <laughs> Going to fill up the cart again after this episode. Speaking of filling up the cart, <laughs> it's time to talk about our sponsor, DyingBreedCollectors.com. Now, that's all one word. I spelled it out so you guys could uh, see what the words look like separate. You smoosh it together. DyingBreedCollectors.com. This week is starting now until Monday at midnight. With the code Crime Dog, you can get the set of books from Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips Criminal. Using Crime Dog, you get 10% off Criminal 1, 2, and 3 as a set from die DyingBreedCollectors.com. That is a big savings. It brings it down to 124 for the entire set. Uh, this is probably, I would say this is, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, these are Taylor's favorite books ever. Am I right? Yeah. Besides Batman stuff, like this is my number one indie series ever. Okay. Um, this is my number one indie series. We love these books and it's really awesome that we can get a, a code on them, uh, the discount code. So type in crime dog at dyingbreedcollectors.com, all one word, from now till Monday at midnight, and you get 10% off. And I think that that is a really good deal. Thank you, dyingbreedcollectors.com. I'll figure it out. I'll come <laughs> up with a jingle. I think I'm going to, I'll reread Felix Leiter sometime in the next couple of months to see how I feel about it now that I kind of know what to expect going into it. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if I kind of had that preconceived notion of what he was going to be like from the other comics and I was kind of taken off guard by it. So I want to give hmm. them their chance. Even I just want to see how I feel about it in a second go around. Now that I know how it's going to end too. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, re I really, really want to see another book by James Robinson picking up where that one left off. And I really want to see Andy Diggle come back. Remember yeah. we interviewed him and he said there's no plans as of right now, but I think he is just a perfect pick. I'd love to see like four more from him or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we can dive into our next set of books by Greg Pak. It's one 12 issue story separated into two different volumes. Do you want to talk about it while I show art? Sure. So basically this is a reimagining I don't want to ruin – well, by talking about one of the characters, you kind of ruin who the, the main bad guy is because there's a reimagining of Odd Job. Odd Job isn't necessarily the villain that we are used to from the movie Goldfinger. And James Bond is trying to, once again, go – is trying to make his way into an underground organization called Uru who has very, very bad plans for mankind. And he has to figure out what that is, and he actually ends up teaming up with odd job to take down the main villain. I don't want to say anything else besides that. I don't want to spoil anything. Well, I have a lot more art to show, so you better keep going. <laughs> so I think this, this, this series is really interesting because this is the first time in the James Bond books where they actually really take villains and other characters from the movies besides James Bond and money, Penny and M. Would you agree with that, Jess? This yeah. The first time they've done that. They never really used a villain from the movies, and Odd Job is totally different than than the, than the Goldfinger movie. Random Except, task. And I think the only, I think the biggest problem I have with the series is the change in art. They change art a lot. I think that was a, that was a frustration you share with me as well, right? Yeah, especially towards the end. Mm-hmm. I think that I wish that they had a more consistent artist. I feel like all the other series kind of have a very consistent artist throughout. And I wish that it happened here. I feel it kind of took me out of the story sometimes because they drew all the characters so differently from issue to issue. I think there's three changes in art altogether. I think which... it really hurt it um, because the story is, ex I found the story to be extremely strong. I loved how Money Penny played such a major role in it, which, um, I I feel like she has. Um, I, I almost thought there was a book about her. She has uh, a short story in the Case Files book. Okay, she's on the cover. But she okay, that's what it is. But but she plays a very major role in this. 
I loved the story. I I loved everything about the story. It was um, an, an excellently written book, but <clears throat> um, it, the change in artist did sort of um, goof me up a little bit. It wasn't enough to take me out of the book, but it, but when you have a, a character change appearances um so much so that you're not sure who it is that does tend to be a little jarring yeah because james bond goes goes from looking like a 35 year old to like a 20 year old at one point and it's like yeah. he looks way too young for this to be consistent so that was kind of frustrating for me i think it, it went back and forth way too much i think the first artist is the best yeah and the first several issue they wish he had been on it more I get it. You have to make the monthly deadline. Sometimes I wish they could just give series more of a lead in time so you can have it be drawn by one artist or at least maybe two artists who have similar styles. So it's not too jarring. So that was probably my biggest frustration with this, with these two books. Yeah. I mean, I can show it right here. We've got this art style in the second book and it changes to this art style in the second book towards the end i i loved the um the bad guy i thought he was interesting i loved how they got to him i i i, I loved how um how he used a particular set of skills and tools to get what he wanted i i thought that was really well done yeah i really do love how I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to talk about how this certain villain, he actually mind controls his henchmen and he puts this little chip in the back of their neck that either shoots endorphins into their brain whenever they do something right or he shocks them when they disobey him or have a second thought about his orders, which I thought was a really cool method of controlling his henchmen. Yeah, really they're either flooded with pleasure or just flooded with pain. Right. And so they're constantly trying to do well because apparently that pleasure feeling is everything. And that's what they strive for. And that shock is horrible. Right. <laughs> so it's like the worst thing possible. Yeah, double motivation. Right. That was really interesting. I think that was my favorite part of how they brought how they really showed how horrifying the villain actually is that he even treats his hench people like garbage. Right. He tortures them. And they're they're brought in against their will. They, and they, a lot of times they mind wipe them and don't even remember who they are. So that was really interesting. And I will so, say I enjoyed the first volume more than the second. Because of the art or the story the art, too? I think the story kind of... I feel like it, I, I still enjoyed it, but I feel like the ending wasn't as satisfying as I was hoping for. Hmm. I feel like the ending action set piece wasn't as cool as I was hoping. And it kind of came out of left field, a certain aspect of the story. And I feel like the ending of how they did away with the main villain could have been a lot cooler. Hmm. Okay. I uh, politely uh, disagree that I, I guess this is another instance where we, where I cared for it a little bit more than you did. Would you give it another seven? I'd probably give it a 7.5 because that first volume was really strong. Yeah. I really thought the first volume was much better than the second one because of the art. I thought the ending just let me down a little bit. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's bad. It just wasn't what I was hoping for. Yeah. I was hoping for more of a comeuppance for the main villain. That would have been really like a fit, like, oh, yeah, he got it. Yeah. I, like I, I didn't really get that feeling. Mm. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, so again, I, I, I'm glad I have these books in my collection. I think these three are probably towards the bottom of my James Bond ranking list, though. Mm -hmm. But by saying that, that's, a pretty, that's pretty good, though. If these are my three least favorites, that's telling you how great the rest of the books are because these are still good. Yeah, these are still good books. Hey, well, and also, you, you enjoyed them much more than I did, so you would recommend them for sure. Yeah, yeah, I definitely I love this um, – I got over the art changes. I, I stuck with the story and I felt I was rewarded and uh, I felt the ending was satisfying and I gave five stars on Goodreads. So I, I dug it a lot. Good. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 
chat, do you have uh, any questions, any more requests for Jess Bragg stories or James Bond stories or Tyler Blunt stories? Can we entertain <laughs> you somehow? How can we entertain you? And Hayden, a.k.a. cancel everyone, Keith Taylor, says, respecting each other's opinion, that's different for the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's what all, that's what Omni Dogs Vault's all about, respecting each other's opinion. That's right. We're positive here. We are a positive force on the internet. Unless we're, we're talking about the downriver people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And then I forgot that. I, I need to include that in my reads for this week because then I read that 27 book that was also terrible. So I had a couple of big lumps of coal this week with all and the they're other kind, And they are my fault. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't read them and recommend them to you. I just sent you screenshots from Hoopla and says, Jess, these sounds like these sound like books you would like. So I yeah. can't, I can't be too held accountable for you right. how bad they were. I, uh, I'm not holding it against you. I, you said these seem like Jess Bragg books, and I agreed reading the descriptions, and they were awful. But <laughs> yeah, the Down River People was one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life because I could not, for the life, if we had to take a test on that book, we'd both fail miserably because we don't know what it was about. Because one of the questions would be, "What happened with the ending?" And I'd be <laughs> like, uh, "I can't even begin to piece together what that was about." It was like there was art throughout the whole thing, and then it just was a bunch of scribbling for the whole end. <laughs> I was like, "Where? What happened to this book?" And Kristen felt off, the same way. It started off really strongly, too. I thought so. It was, it was interesting. A, it was a cool, I, I almost wish they had just stuck with the slice of life angle. Yeah. But they decided to go in a weird supernatural route that comes out of nowhere. And it's like, what am I reading? It's like it's like the author at one point started to, short, like started to snort cocaine and was like, no, no, no. I know how it's supposed to go. And started clacking on his keyboard and sent off to the artist. And they just did it. And it was like, all right. That, that's the that's direction. I felt like he couldn't... the. Uh, creator couldn't commit. He was, like you said, it was it was a good slice of life, interesting thing, and then he just threw in this other thing, and still didn't finish it, or or the finish was so gobbledygooked around we couldn't figure out what it was. Right, that's for sure. Definitely don't recommend the Downriver people. <laughs> no, no, I'm definitely reviewing that. I'm going to do a video tomorrow of all my reads this week. And I, I will try and keep my comments in a positive tone, but I wasn't happy with that book. If you still root beard books, I'm sure that would be one of your victims. Mm, I, did, I didn't hate it as much as I was super disappointed in it. And I'm not root bearing it because it was on my iPad. <laughs> you don't want to oh. root, root beer your iPad to make a point. No. What's up? I am... Woke up in the middle of the night, might as well say hi. Hi. And you had a great question for us a couple of weeks ago. So if you have any good questions. Yeah, let, let us, us know. know. And uh, Matt D is asking us about Greg Pak, another book that he has from Dynamite. I have not read the John Wick book by Greg I haven't Pack. either. I love John Wick. I know Jeff hasn't, re hasn't seen the movies yet, so you probably haven't thought of the book. But right. I'll check it out. I love John Wick. That's one of my favorite action movies of all time. I know. I... You have to watch those, Jess. They're so good. I even own them on my Apple TV. They were on sale for the first two for ten dollars. They're amazing. I mean, I think those movies and Dread are like the best action movies of the past ten years. They're awesome. Well, at least I saw Dread. Dread is fantastic. It took me ten years to see that, though. <laughs> when is Jess reviewing Squirrel Girl? Uh, when hell freezes over. Have you guys read Four Kids Walk Into a Bank? I did, and I loved it. I have it as well, and I also enjoyed it. I also enjoyed Matthew Rosenberg's other book, uh, We Can Never Go Home. That one was really good. That was like a crime supernatural story. Right. I, uh, I enjoyed um, that book, too. Uh, let's see, Jess, the new Harley run is getting a standard HC release for its volume two in December. Has the first volume been released? Uh, cancel? Who's writing volume, the new... Oh, volume one, my bad. Okay. Who's writing the new series, do you know? Um, Hayden knows. It's somebody good uh, because it's it's apparently really good. 
I haven't read any single issues yet, but Hayden has, and he's really happy with it. Speaking of something we're really happy with, we have a really cool interview coming up this Wednesday, don't we, Jess? We sure do. We're going to be interviewing Eric Powell of The Goon, of The Hillbilly, and his new book, What Eddie Geem Done. So we're really excited to interview him. We'll be probably uploading that Wednesday night, maybe Thursday, but you'll, you'll see it, though. It's going to be a great time. Really looking forward uh, to that. Is there any part of you that wants to do it live, or would you always want to keep? You'd rather not get distracted by the chat. I think you'd mm. rather not get distracted by the chat. Yeah, I also you also have to run that by them too before you commit yeah. to it. Okay, so Harley's written by Stephanie Phillips. It's a different take on her, but it works so well. Okay, good. I never heard of Stephanie Phillips before. Mm, no, me either. Um, here's a good question. What made you both come back into comics after quitting it for some years? I think I know your origin story. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows mine. <laughs> it was pretty much Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, and the rest, That's... and Hellblazer, and all those books, right? It was Dark Knight Returns and Watchmen. Yeah, I took a is 1976 when I stopped, and I believe Dark Knight Returns came out in '85. Um, in in that time frame, and that's when I came back. That particular book brought me back into comics, and then Watchmen kept me there. I used to read comics when I was younger. In my teen years, especially, I had a subscription to Ultimate Spider-Man. Where you like kind of send in a little postcard and check off what series you want, and they'll send it to you in the mail. I used to read that. I mean, I had Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One, Long Halloween, Hellboy. So I read those books. I always kept them in my closet because worried people would make fun of me. But I kind of just stopped reading them after college. I mean, during college, because who really has time to read comics during college? Not at all. And then I got married, and a couple months after I got married, I heard about this book called Batman Court of Owls, and I had to read it. I started listening to Kevin James, Fat Man on Kevin James, Kevin Smith's Fat Man on Batman podcast, where he'd interview creators like Scott Snyder from and Bruce Tim, things like that. It really got me back into comic books. I got those trades of the Batman by Scott Snyder. I got American Vampire, and that really got me back into comics. And here I am today with a room full of collected editions. And, and you're partly actually. to blame. And you're partly to blame for it because you, Riley, and Lou were pretty instrumental in getting me to buy hardcovers. Oh, I didn't know I was thrown into that illustrious group. Thank you. Well, I think I, you didn't have your channel back then. The two big channels back when I started were Hardcover Reviews, which was Lou's original channel, and mm -hmm. Omnibus Collector. And I think Riley is pretty responsible for your collection too, right? Yeah. And that was back when he just had a blog. Yeah, when he was on Tumblr, that's what got oh, me yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, Tumblr. So those two guys, and then you joined them for Omni for Omni Bros Live, and that's when that was kind of the heyday for you back in 2016. Yeah, you're buying everything and drinking every root beer you could find. <laughs> root beer float, or ice cream in it. <laughs> I gained 20 pounds. Man, 2016 Jess was the best. <laughs> People certainly have fond memories of him. <laughs> I don't know. 2021, Jess, isn't too far off in terms of buying stuff. Uh, no, you're right. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm not drinking uh, root beer floats all the time. You are thinner, so that's a big thing. Yeah, I'm really grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gabriel, who started the Omnibus Collector's channel? That would be Riley Moore. He is the Omnibus Collector. He has that trademarked. He is the Omnibus Collector. You should trademark. You should, you should trademark Omni Dog's vault. I, I don't. What's involved uh, in that? Can you tell you what, what's involved in it? Um, it's not hard to trademark stuff. Um, and you I think I could make. It? I, I know everything's already been taken, like Omni Dog's Vault dot com, and Omni Dog's Vault dot org, and everything, because people want me to buy the, uh, right the. The, 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 the dominion name. what is it the, the domain uh, name domain um and even my gmail account was had to be <laughs> omni dogs vault 2 you're like lucille 2 on rest of development <laughs> um so i 
I don't know that I take it that seriously. I guess if somebody tried to sue me or something, I could prove prior use. Um, but I, it's this is more of a lark for me. And Riley's young and wants to get things started and stuff. And and, and this is just my way of having fun. So and Jess wants to die before he moves, so he's not. He doesn't care about trademarking stuff. No, you're right. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I've made it clear. Yeah, I don't want to make, move this stuff. When you make statements, you want to die before you move. You're probably not going to trademark stuff. Oh, look, Hayden doesn't even know what we're talking about. Root beer with ice cream? WTF? Root yeah, man, that's a root popular. beer float. It's way popular in America. Maybe that's Delicious. not a thing in England. No, it's not. And it's especially not in places uh, like Japan and South America because they have a different palate and root beer tastes like medicine to them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I Interesting. Yeah. That's a... Uh, yeah. And, and I can see that. I've tasted um, uh, the the root that root beer, uh, shoot, uh, the, sars, uh, the sassafras root okay. that original root beer was made from. And it does taste like medicine a little bit. Um, oh, here's Imperious Flux. How's it going, Flex? Yeah, Gabriel, I agree with Chris and cancel everyone that you need to get the Ultimate Spider on the Ultimate Spider-Man on but that's coming out at the end of this year cuz I'm definitely picking that up. That's a great place to start with Spider-Man for I agree, year. yeah. Um Oh, so purveyor's going to blame us when he starts buying stuff. Cool. Make a video about how you blame us. Um and here's something. Carl N says, Jess, you should visit New Bern, South Carolina, the birthplace of Pepsi, and have a cherry Pepsi float. Ooh, I love wild cherry Pepsi. Holy smoke. So do I. A cherry Pepsi here's float sounds so good. I like, I like regular Coke better than Pepsi, but wild cherry Pepsi is my favorite pop. Mm, pop. I love Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jess, I was just in Target today, and they have a shirt at Target that says has a picture of Coke and it says "Best Pop Ever." And that's <laughs> I'm sure they only sell in certain parts of the country. Because I'm sure down in your neck of the woods, people wouldn't want that shirt. No, but in places like Wisconsin, they call it pop. If you call it soda in Pittsburgh, you get made fun of. That's for sure. Yeah, same in the uh, the uh, Upper Peninsula of um, Michigan and stuff like that. That's where it's pop. Um. Let's see, what else is going on? When I had COVID, I was so bored, I was slamming a bunch of root beer floats. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to spend COVID. Now, this is a thing that I grew up with in California. We all, it was all Coke. Yeah, all sodas happened, were Coke. That happened in Louisville whenever I lived down there for a couple of years. You would say, I want a Coke. What kind? I want a Sprite. And exactly. It, it really threw me off when I first moved down there. I was like, what are you talking about? But- you, I never saw one Pepsi down in Louisville. Down south, there's like no Pepsi anywhere. It's all Coke. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Any restaurant you go to, it's going to be Coke, not Pepsi. You can go buy Pepsi at a gas station or at a, or at a, like a grocery store, but you'll never find like a restaurant down south that has Pepsi as their main pop. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm like Hugs for Drugs. We grew up calling everything Coke. Well, that was kind of like the original back then, really. That was kind of the OG. Well, I'm not saying I go back to 1904 with Coke. Shut no, I'm up. just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying there was a lot less options for pop back when you were younger. Is all I'm saying, and Coke was like the dominant one. All right, Taylor. Jeff's always to take things so personally. <laughs> I do not. I did not even read totally, it that way. I'm totally teasing you back. Matt D is excited about our interview with Eric Powell. Those Goon Library editions are way out of print. I love these omnibuses they put out, though. They're really nice, really thick, really well put together, reasonably priced. These are good options for those of you who don't want to track down the expensive library editions. And I love that they just named it the Goon Bunch of Old Crap. <laughs> I only need to read one more volume. I'm ready to go. And I also read this that I talked about recently, Big Man Plans. I need this to read. must read for any crime fiction <laughs> fan if you have a stomach who's willing to endure the violence in this book gosh i don't remember it being that bad whereas uh what's the other book that i couldn't handle men of wrath 
Men of Wrath. Boy, I couldn't take that one. You also might have been in a different state of mind when you read Big Man Plans because it wasn't during COVID. I think you probably read, I think we read Men, Men of Wrath in the early days of COVID when you wanted to read just light and fluffy stuff. Well, that's a good point. You might be right. So who knows? Um, Imperious Flex says, Great Dread video, Jess. Thank you very much. Impatiently waiting for the others. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my uh, follow-up uh, very soon, like very soon, because it's all fresh in my mind. And then I will be doing the Judge Anderson video probably in a couple months or another six weeks. Um, but good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Imperius. I appreciate that. Hey, Jess, thanks so much for the Invincible by Kirkman recommendation. So, boss. It's weird to see you in, uh, <laughs> recommend a Kirkman book. I've never seen that kind of comment before. That is the only book by Kirkman I recommend. It is an excellent uh, book. I love that series. I've only made it through volume three, but I've loved all of it, and I know it's supposed to be all great. Um, I am definitely going to finish that, but it is great, the three volumes I've read. Um, and I know I'm not going to do this purveyor of loops, read Red Room, because Gabe warned me not to. And he, Gabe knows me very well. What's and he said, 100%, I am not to read that book. Is there a reason why? Yeah, I'll tell you afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Oh, I, it's okay. It's popular, but it's very gruesome and grim and disturbing. Okay. Um, it, in, a, in a real life kind of way. So I'll, I'll tell you afterwards, but Gabe knows me well enough. And he said, absolutely do not read it for me. Justin has a good question that I can answer for him. At um, 1034. 1034. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have either of you read any of the James <laughs> Bond novels or the hard case crime books? I'm currently working my way through the hard case crime line of novels. I have read a couple hard case crime books. I've read all the Stephen King books he's written through that line. And I've also read the first quarry book by Max Allen Collins. And actually reading these James Bond books made me rent the Moonraker novel by Ian Fleming, which I'm reading right now on my Kindle. So that's my first James Bond novel. How is that? I've heard, I've only read the first chapter yesterday and I have a lot of time to read it. Cause I was trying to read these books but apparently it's the best James Bond book and it's the most unlike its actual movie. Oh, because it's not actually taking place in space like Moonraker does when Roger Moore shoots lasers at people. Hey, we got a $5 super chat. Awesome. Have a root beer float on me from Joe Blair. Just don't drink it all in one place. Okay. Thank you, Joe Blair. I appreciate that. I'm going to do you a favor and tell you where you can get <laughs> <laughs> Criminal volumes one for three, volumes one through three for 10% off this weekend. And that's at dyingbreedcollectors.com. All one word, dyingbreedcollectors.com with the code crime dog gets you. And the... this answers Hero Wing 2.0's question where he says, Where would you recommend starting with Ed Brubaker's crime books? You could buy right these here, books right off of Dying Breed Collectors. Dying Breed Collectors has the set of one through three using the code Crime Dog. You get 10% off, which is a big savings. He has it at 140. It's down to 126, which is good for all three books. Taylor has uh, gotten a book from him. It was packaged extremely well. Um, and uh, we highly recommend DyingBreedCollectors.com. Use the code Crime Dog from now through the end of Monday. Today is June seventeenth. Monday is what day? Uh, Monday uh, is the twenty-first. The twenty-first from the seventeenth through the end of the day, Monday on the seventeenth. You can use the code Crime Dog to get ten percent off Criminal at all one word DyingBreedCollectors.com. And that is where everyone should start with crime, a life of crime. And Hayden, there are three books in the by Stephen King in the hard case crime line. There's The Colorado Kid, there's Joyland, and Later. 
I really loved Joyland and later was also really good. I never read the Colorado kid. Uh, Gabriel. No, it's not worth getting. Don't get it. It's just a bunch of single of first issues of yeah. all the rebirth book. It's a waste of an omnibus that nobody should buy. I agree. I wouldn't say that about many things, but any, any omnibus that's just a sing, just the issues of every series, just the first issue of every series is garbage and not worth buying. Yeah, absolutely not. Don't get it. Uh Oh, we have one dislike. Bet it was Tyler because he got timed out then canceled. Or it was Kirkman. Kirkman, we just recommend the uh, book from you. Don't stop disliking us. Yeah, everybody, please hit the like button. Please like, subscribe, and comment to us because I feel like we've come pretty much to the end of our time. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. Joe Blair, we really appreciate that. Jeff Durham just picked up Friend of the Devil, you guys recommended. Love that book. Love that series. I need to read Cruel Summer again. I might read that tomorrow. Um, good, Jeff. I'm glad our recommendations are uh, something that you're enjoying. That's great. Um, <laughs> Atit says, it's never too late for more tangents. <laughs> all, all we need are just some questions from the chat, and we can tangent on. I mean, I have the night off, so it's fine. Tangent on, Garth. Tangent, tangent on. on, Garth. Do either of you listen to music while reading? Yes, we do. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I know Jess likes to listen to ambient music. I either listen to jazz or movie scores. So we both go a little bit different directions, but Jess does have a lot of movie score vinyl like you talked about earlier. Yeah. And Jess, if you read Cruel Summer, you should listen to Thief by Tangerine Dream while you read it. That'd be a great, that'd be a great matchup. Cruel Summer and Thief? Yeah, that'd be a great matchup. Okay. And it's set in the 80s, and that's the perfect 80s soundtrack. Oh, and wasn't that the album that freaked out your wife? Yeah, my wife's easily freaked out by stuff. Though. <laughs> my wife thinks that my uh, my Reaper Batman on the Bone Cycle is scary, too. So He's awesome. Yeah. I my love wife. that whole thing. Yeah, she thought my Doctor Doom that's holding the skull and the vertebrae was freaky, too. And that's like, this is a sign of a great figure. <laughs> uh joe blair i actually haven't studied uh record store day round two i i still have online selections coming in um i'm going to have to give it a good uh solid um i'm gonna have to give it a good long look because i don't know that i'm gonna go back in per i know the idea is to drive traffic to your local store um, but it, when I got back home that day, I, I, the line wasn't that bad, but I was still kind of tired from standing in line and then walking in there and everything I wanted was online for the same price and no tax and free shipping. Um, so I really didn't miss out. I, I could have just spent my whole time buying online. So I will study the record store day uh, options for in July, but I'm not sure I'm going to go stand in line again. That's that's up there with things that I really dislike, standing in line. It doesn't sound like a just brag thing to do. No. And uh, Gabriel's asking, how good is the artwork in All New Wolverine? It's all fantastic. There's not one bad art artist. There's not one bad arc. It's all A plus material, and you have to buy it. Yeah, that's that's the last omnibus we're going to recommend to you, Gabriel. That's it. All new Wolverine. I, that's the book you should get. That's definitely in my top five favorite Marvel runs of all time. Maybe even top three. It's awesome. I'm so it. pleased to hear you say that. I really am because I love that book. Let me see my fav my top five Marvel books would probably be Punisher Max, Daredevil by Bendis and Brubaker, All New Wolverine, and, man, Marvels. I love Marvels. Oh, yeah, they're, Marvels they're, is they're great. They're probably my top five. They're fantastic. Uh, uh, oh, Purveyor. You, that should be your first omnibus, Purveyor. 
You're just getting back into the Omni game. You should get that first. That's still in print, and it's still awesome. The only Wolverine is on our sponsor's website, Dying Breed Collectors. So you ah, can pick it Dying there. Breed Collectors has all new Wolverine. DyingBreedCollectors.com. So, Jess, your top three, your top five favorite Marvel books. Let me see if I can guess them. Oh, okay. Wait, let me think of them. <laughs> well, let me guess the ones I know you're going to say. My favorite fi five Marvel books. Okay, I, let's. I know it's all new Wolverine because we're talking about it. That's number one for you. Yeah. New X Men. Yeah. Hmm. What else is there that you'd really like? I'm trying to think. Can you think of top five? Or are you still? Yeah, no, I've got it. Hmm, this is a hard one. Is there another X-Men choice in there? Yeah. Uncanny X-Force? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm three for five. Right, you have two more choices. Oh, gosh. That's a hard one. I think, I, I think you're, I'm good with X-Men. I think you're done with X-Men. Yep, I am. I'm trying to think of characters that you would like that maybe I'm not interested in. I'm having a hard time with the last two. Mm, uh, let's see. Uh, do you want some hints? Yeah, give me some hints. Uh, they are older characters with modern runs that are my favorite. Fantastic Four by Hickman. Yep. Nice. Older characters. Older characters. Very good. You're doing yeah. well. I don't think a Spider-Man book would be in your top five. Nope. Older characters. Okay, so Fantastic Four is older. X-Men's older. Older characters. Ah, dang it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm not sure. What is the last one? Silver Surfer by Slot. Ugh, I never would have guessed that. Oh, really? That's the book that made me cry. <laughs> I, know you, I know you love it, but you haven't talked about it in a while. So I oh, no, you. I guess that's true. I, I have like you talked about the other ones a lot recently. I was I, pretty close, though. Four for five. Is oh, my good. gosh. You did so well. I'm amazed. <laughs> I, I actually try not to talk about Silver Surfer by Slot because it's out of print. I'm, I, I have a terrible story about that book. So uh -oh. I, didn't, I didn't jump on it right away, and it went out of print so quick. And then oh, yeah. IST... Put up and they, they put it up that they had it, and everyone went crazy. And we all we all bought it. It turns out they didn't actually have it. It was a glitch. I was so upset because that book is. I think the two books are the hardest to find right now. Are probably that and Wonder Woman by Gail Simone. Those books oh. are they are literally impossible to find. Like I'm not even joking. They're like not even on eBay. They're like really impossible. Or, or if they are on eBay, it's for an exorbitant amount of money. Those are like two of my biggest whales. My my three biggest whales. Are one room by Gail Simone, Silver Surfer by Slot, and Punisher Noir. It's the last Marvel <laughs> Noir book I need. It's so dumb. It's not even a book that people really want, but it's a book that I want. That's what's holding up our noir review. I have to pick it up. I, I Jess, can you imagine how good I'm gonna feel when I finally if, get that book for cover? If you stumble on it in a comic store. But how bad will I feel if I hate it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. we i haven't even read it yet because i've been waiting for our we, review we have no idea if we're gonna like these books or not we've invested so much time oh, in I know. Them. <laughs> hopefully we like them yeah um let's see now joe chip's really going going full blast with the jess bragg jokes tonight oh joe you're all over me that's okay i am an older character i i'm i'm fine with it uh which cover should I get? Uh, which whichever one appeals to you, purveyor. Here's the one. I, I, I think Taylor and I got different ones. I got the variant cover by Kubert. I love it. And I think I got the other cover. Uh, it's whichever cover appeals to you. Look how cool this cover is. That is a cool cover. They're both great, so you can't really go wrong. Usually, yeah. I think one's much better than the other. I do think the one I got is better, but I can see why people get the other one too. I think that one's by Ben Gall, right? Oh, I think so, yeah. Um, All New Wolverine is not the sequel to Old Man Logan Atit. Oh. It is uh, Laura taking over for... Um, Logan. For Logan, um, for Wolverine after he gets killed. And 
uh, X twenty three takes over the all new wolf uh, takes over the Wolverine mantle. But there is becomes... an old man old man Logan S story at the end where it wraps up called old old woman Laura, which is great. Yeah, it, it's not tied to old man Logan at all, but it's just aping that title. I, I'm gosh, I should read that book again. That's a that's going to be a definite reread for me. Like we just did our episode about books that we love to reread. I would yeah. have included that, but I've only read it once. So I can't really put it in my favorite books to reread, but I know I'm going to reread that every year or two because it's so good. And it's a really quick read. That's right, Atit. Feral Lad, the precursor to Iron Man. You got it, buddy. Did you cry when Feral Lad died? Uh, I did not cry, but as an eight-year-old, I was moved. And then I was scared when his ghost came back and was seen <laughs> on uh, in the Legion Fortress. We both need to read The Legion by Brian Bendis. Uh, I think I have it. It's on Hoopla, so I can check it out that way. Yeah, and another thing I want to read by Bendis is his Young Justice. I have to get all the Superman books by him. I need to pick those up sometime soon. I, I like the first couple ones I read on Hoopla. I like yeah. enough to pick them up. I think we're in the minority of liking that run. <laughs> I, we seem to be in the minority of people that like Bendis. I don't know like, why. It's it's crazy. He's I feel like a lot of people hate him, but a lot of people have to love him. He's one of the most popular writers in comics, and he constantly sells well. So do you, do you feel like that uh, criticism and I don't want to say hate, but but well, okay, criticism and hate seem to be louder than love and respect when it comes, well, when it comes to everything, but particularly our hobby. I think that sometimes Bendis likes to shake things up and do things that are different. So I think a big complaint that I hear with, with Bendis, people don't like Bendis, is that he doesn't write the characters the way they've always been written. That right. he doesn't maybe understand their background. Like the Moon Knight run, I heard a lot of people complain saying that's not Moon Knight or the X-Men characters. He doesn't understand the X-Men characters. And so he, he does things and goes in a different direction than people would like him to. That's what I like about him is that he takes characters in a different direction. Right. So I think some people just think he goes too far afield and doesn't understand the characters the way that they were created. And I think sometimes he wants it to go in a different direction, do something totally different. And some people just aren't on board for that ride. But do you think with the rise of social media being as powerful as it is that the the volume of of uh, hate tends to be louder than the volume of uh, people liking things? Oh, yeah, I think people I mean, I, social media and the Facebook, Twitter, the vehement bile that people spew about anything. I'm not saying it's bad if you just like Bendis. It's perfectly fine to voice your opinion, but people, love to voice their negative opinions. And I'm someone who's willing to voice negative opinion, but I'm not excited to share my negative opinions. I don't like when I dislike something, but some people love to dislike things and they love to share their dislikes of things, which I don't really understand. So I think a lot of times dislike gets more clicks, it gets more views, it gets more interaction. Yeah. So I put it that way. But I think people don't understand how much we owe to Brian Bendis I think the two guys who really helped save Marvel comics are Brian Bendis and Kevin Smith. Without them, Marvel might not even be here because they really brought back the line in a big, bad way. Like Kevin Smith doing Daredevil was a big deal back when <laughs> Marvel was in bankruptcy. And Brian Bendis says, when I started at Marvel, they were like selling filing bi cabinets because they were bankrupt, <laughs> needed money. Can you, imagine, know that. can you imagine that now? They're like the behemoth and they have so much money now, especially with the MCU and being bought by Disney. Yeah, it's, it's almost laughable to think about that. They were literally selling filing cabinets and Joe Cas Actually, I'll, I'll put it this way. Joe Quesada, Bendis, and Kevin Smith are really the reason why Marvel's even here now today. As much as you're mad about Joe Quesada about <laughs> the JMS run of Spider-Man, without them, we wouldn't have Marvel today. Mm, okay. Fair. It's similar to how without... Uh, Neil Adams, we wouldn't have Batman as he is today, even though Neil Adams isn't the best artist that he used to be. But we still owe him so much for what he used to be and what he used to do. Right, and I'd throw Denny O'Neill in there too. Right. For I just, writing I think, him. I just mean, I think Neil Adams' artwork 
went much more downhill and he went too long than he should have. Whereas Denny O'Neill, I think has more, I think he kind of ended when the getting was good. <laughs> you know? Right. I agree with that. Yeah. No, I, you're right about that. But I think most people agree for the most part that Bendis is ultimate Spider-Man and his daredevil are really good. I'm not saying everyone agrees with that. I know Tyler and Omar don't like his daredevil run, but for the vast majority of people, people love those runs. I, okay. I've already said I like Bendis. <laughs> I, I, I like just about everything I've read by him. Actually, I've liked everything I've read by him. And the only thing I didn't like, him. the only thing I didn't like was Scarlet, and that's more of a personal thing than anything uh, else. Yeah, and I liked Scarlet too. Whoa, it's four a.m. in Scotland. We've got he Hayden back. Even for a childless person, that's late. <laughs> that is late. 4 a.m. is <laughs> late. I can't remember the last time I was up at 4 a.m. Uh, you you operate at 4 a.m. sometimes. I got up at 4 a.m. this morning. Wow. Yeah, you, never know when Je- you never know when Jess is going to wake up or go to sleep. No, and you never know how I'm going to feel either. <laughs> <laughs> I felt good when I woke up, so I said I better get up right now and enjoy it. Do you ever feel like your life is a roll of the dice every day? Oh, yeah. Up? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I absolutely do. Every I, day you wake up, it's like, what's it going to be today? And you just throw yep. it out. <laughs> 100%. Until I, guess I get that, in general. Until I get that pain pump, that is how my life is. And man 40s here. Hey, and man Didn't the Spider-Man movie from 2002 kind of jumpstart things again for Marvel? That was definitely one of the other catalysts, I think. Yeah, I was more talking about from the comics angle. I think that definitely generated some interest in the character and in the company. But Bendis doing Ultimate Spider-Man, Kevin Smith and Joe Quesada doing Daredevil, and Joe Quesada overseeing the company, I think those different books and those different initiatives really helped bring Marvel back from the brink. And Jess, there's a question from Joe Blair that only you can answer. Uh, Promethea may be along with Tom Strong and Top 10, my three... Fa- oh, they're Swamp Thing, too. Uh, Promethea is one of my favorite Alan Moore books. It It is very philosophical. It's not hard to read, but it is very philosophical. It goes into some very deep, interesting things, but I loved it. And I... I can't promise you you're going to like it, but man, I loved it. I loved everything about it. The art is fantastic by J.H. Williams III. Uh, I love the whole concept of it. I Go into it with an open mind. Know that Omnidog loved it and, and uh, just get into it. I dug it like crazy. I really dug it. And I have been up since 4 a.m., so I am starting to nod off. It's 11 here, or or uh, 2 a.m. in Tyler's time, whatever time zone he's in. Ah, what's the question? Whoop! What's the code again? I'm glad you asked. Thank you, purveyor. If you go to our sponsor, DyingBreedCollectors.com, it's all one word. I spelled it out so it's easier to uh, type out. DyingBreedCollectors.com. Use the code Crime Dog, and for ten percent off of the Criminal hardcover set, volumes one through three, gets you ten percent off from now until Monday, the twenty-first at midnight. Go to DyingBreedCollectors.com get 10% off the set of criminal using the code Crime Dog. And we thank Dying Breed Collectors for his support. He's a good guy. And one final question I want to answer by Farhan. Just started getting the Star Wars, got the Aaron J- Jason Aaron run. My question now is Darth Vader by Gillen or Soul for you guys, which one is better? Oh, do I have to choose? Both are great, but my personal favorite is the Soul Run. And my personal favorite is the Gillen Run. So, sorry. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> you should buy both of them, actually. You really should. 
Dylan has the introduction of Dr. Afro, which is one of the great character creations uh, of the modern era. I think Tyler Blunt liked the soul run better, if that helps you at all, which it probably doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chad, for talking. We had a lot of fun with you guys talking Bond and some tangents and talking about <laughs> lime drinks to the face. <laughs> thank you to the chat very much. You guys are great tonight. Uh, lots of uh, lots of regulars, which we appreciate, and lots of new people, which we appreciate. We appreciate DyingBreedCollectors.com for sponsoring us. Thank you guys so much uh, for hanging in there and watching. I uh, am uh, happy to have the Minister of Comics as my co-host. Where can they find you on the internet? You can find me at Minister of Comics on Instagram. I'll be posting a haul tomorrow. I do reviews. I do some reels as well. So check me out at Minister of Comics. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault. I'm going to start churning out um, videos on a more regular basis, hopefully, once I start feeling better. And I'm on Instagram also, Omnidog underscore vault. Somebody stole Omnidog's vault on Instagram. So I'm Omnidog's underscore vault <laughs> on Instagram. And uh, next Imaginot, tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock Friday night uh, for the Omnidog and Omnicat special show. She can't do it on Saturday night. So we're doing it tomorrow night at Friday, 8 o'clock, and I will answer that question and next imagine that always has good questions so see uh joe chip says this was one of your best shows guy thank you guys uh -huh. very thank you very much joe uh so with that said peace and love peace and love thank you very much everybody this was a lot of fun and we love you all